Um, I guess I want to say a little bit about Dale. I actually met um, Dale. It was through your show. At, he had a show at City Arts. Was that back in 2017 or 18? Before COVID. Before COVID, <laughs> BC. And um, and uh, I was a reporter at the time for the East Wichita News, and I interviewed him and did a, and did a feature about his photography. So, um, which I think is really amazing. You'll see it here in a minute. Um, and then um, we had him. Um, again, we had him as, as a guest before COVID, but it was a snowstorm. And I think um, Kelly and Gail, you two were there. You were about the only ones that made it. Um, so we're really excited to have him back and also recording this. I'll, I'll be able to email out the recording to our members who weren't able to make it tonight as well. Um, Dale has been a, a teacher of photography for 30, 30 40, long time. Long time yeah. uh, both in, at high schools in Wichita and at Wichita State. And um, amazing shows at City Arts and elsewhere. So um, let's uh, give it up for uh, Dale. Well, thank you, Sam, for uh, stealing my introduction. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a whole lot more to say, um, but I do want to uh, acknowledge my wife, Kathy. She's sitting back there, yay. I wasn't and, here during the snowstorm. No, she wasn't. <laughs> and uh, my friend Madeline, she wasn't here during the snowstorm either because uh, I told them don't. <laughs> if I didn't have to be there, I wouldn't have been there. And it was, it was a drastic night. So anyway, uh, to kind of get myself into this, I have a handout for you. Uh, I am a former teacher, so this is nothing I need to know. I'll uh, just take one and pass it on, and uh, we'll just go from there. And if you, I think there's a black one. Oh my! But anyway, this is just kind of a way for me to uh, get into this, uh, and. Uh, I've been a photographer, artist, whatever, for many, many, many years. And I always kind of run across these little quotes and they are significant. They can say things that, you know, I can't. So anyway, this is, like I said, it's just kind of a way to get in. How many of you in here are photographers? Okay, well, uh, anyway, this word photography can be changed to any kind of art. Art mm -hmm. photography is a journey and exploration towards our unconscious, a tool of self-knowledge and personal exploration that allows us to be children again because it gives us the ability to be amazed. And that happens a lot in photography because a lot of times you take the picture and then after you actually see the print, you say, wow, I didn't see that. It was, wasn't there. So anyway, um, I retired from uh, my career in 2013, and uh, I decided that I had to uh, redefine my life a little bit, so I had some kind of a direction and purpose. So I, uh, and I've been at it for a long time, but anyway, I decided I am going to be a visual artist, and uh, I have a I have a way of looking at words and seeing what do they mean? Well, what does it mean to be visual, to see, you know? And uh, so anyway, I interpret that as visual art, art intended to be looked at. And so what is art? Well, that's a tough word to define, but it's basically a way of expressing ourselves. And I think we can leave it at that, uh, that art is, in so many different ways, whether it's the performing arts, the visual arts, literary arts, whatever, it's a way of, you know, people expressing themselves. So uh, for me, being a visual artist, uh, it, it works for me to say a little prayer every time I go into the dark room, and it's always this. The old Lord helped me make the most beautiful picture I've ever made. And uh, that is my goal is to create beauty, something worth looking at. Uh, and so that's the, the bottom line, because 
if it isn't worth looking at, I mean, you know, you can have a great idea. You have an incredible idea, but if it isn't done well, the craftsmanship on it is, is uh, not up to par and everything else, then it, it kind of defeats the purpose. So somewhere around here. Oh, it's on the little table there. Oh, all right. So anyway, we're gonna talk about related ideas and related ideas are all over uh, the uh, art world. And so let's start out with this one. And uh, this particular image is basically um, a recurring theme in art. Obviously, mother and child, and you could even go beyond that and call it uh, Madonna and child. And I had about seven or eight different uh, images of this this genre. And so anyway, uh, when I took this particular photograph, I was in Venice, Italy, and I actually was running down the street and I ran right past it. And I looked up and there was this woman talking to another woman down on the street. And I just put on the brakes and I went back and I was standing beside the woman on the street and they were just carrying on a conversation. And uh, so anyway, I'm standing there next to this woman and they didn't even act like they saw me. So I look up at the lady and I point my camera up at her and she just keeps right on talking with a friend and click, I took a picture, click, I took another picture. The other picture, she had a nice smile on her face. The little girl didn't look stressed and the whole bit and uh, this image stuck. So look at the eyes of the mother, same type of thing. Now, another kind of related idea is uh, within the image itself. And here, and I didn't pick up on this right away, but I saw the image. And we were walking uh, down the street in Varna, Bulgaria, on a work team, church work team. And I was out in front of the group, and I had time to stop. I saw these little kids in the playground play, and I just thought, you know, that's really cool. And the other thing I was able to pick up on was the simple background. The wall, it was just, that's, you know, very photographic to uh, have something that isn't uh, d distracting in the background. But here are these little kids playing, and I just stuck my camera through the, the uh, iron fence, and I just stood there, and these kids were playing basketball, and I clicked, took the picture, and here came my group of people walking past, and I clicked, took another picture, and I did, here again, a little prayer because I couldn't see the picture or, I mean, this is film. This is not uh, digital. You can't go back and look at it. So anyway, I had to wait until I got home to, uh, but I had this hope that everything was gonna work and it worked much better than I had hoped because here's the, the ball going through the hoop. And if you'll notice the ball has kind of a happy face on it. Now, what are the chances? of a little happy face showing up on that side of the ball. It could have been on the other side just as easy. And here are these kids playing. And here's a little bit of related idea. Where do I push the, the red button, Sam? It's a little, it's in the middle, it's a little button. Oh, okay. Did you, did you find it? Is that it? Eh, that doesn't show. Uh, let's see here. Wow. It's the, this one. Uh, that one, all right, anyway. Uh, Here's the, the little hoop. And, you know, again, these are kids in a different country. They don't have basketball hoops to shoot for. So they're out just playing and stuff. And uh, so all of that's happening. I clicked the picture and I had it in an exhibit and I heard a couple of ladies talking and she says, oh, look at those little angels. And it dawned on me, hey, one's got a halo. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, and a kid, you know, you've got these elements within the image and here's a cross, you know, and the kids are standing in a cross and they're angels. So anyway, that was just another kind of a related idea that uh, can be transformed within an image. Now, we're gonna move on a little bit uh, to a different kind of related ideas. And before we get in there, can anybody tell me what this is called? Anybody? 
What is this styrofoam. called? Styrofoam. Styrofoam what? Takeout yeah. box. Okay. Yeah. However, the other day, my friend George called it a clam. And I thought, what? <laughs> it's a clam. Okay. So anyway, here he is. There's a clam. The artist job to do is to photograph this in a way that it can resemble a clam. Now I call these visual metaphors and there's all different kinds of metaphors. We use them all the time and we don't even think about it. I'm gonna read you a few of them in a little bit, but the job of the photographer artist is to photograph something. It is what it is but it becomes something more. And here we have one of those instances where it is what it is, just straight on, no manipulation, it's just a plant. And as I saw that walking through the Dillon's, uh, I looked down at it and I saw it and I said, wow, that looks like flames. And I got home, I didn't buy it. I got home and I thought, I went back to Dillon's and bought it and uh, took it to the studio and started photographing it and I couldn't get it to look like plant. Oh, it just looks like another mother-in-law uh, plant form. So anyway, I worked and worked at it and I finally was satisfied with the fact that, you know, here we've got these things that, you know, is close enough for me to look like both a plant and uh, the visual metaphor of flames. Now I want to talk a little bit about visual or just plain metaphors because uh we use them all the time we don't even think about it especially in our language uh literary you know people who write use a lot of uh, metaphors country music is loaded with metaphors one of my favorites of course is garth brooks and you listen to his music and it's full of metaphors like birds on a high line and things like that so i wrote down some of these uh, things that we just kind of use every day and don't think about it, like get with the program. What program? You know, the road of life. Is it the road? No, it's life. You know, it's just, you know, jump into the fire. That's a Garth Brooks song, you know. <laughs> jump into the fire. Well, what does that really mean? It means get with it, you know, and uh, carry your own weight that you know it's heavy but you know all right i'm just going to move on here howl like the wind cry like a rainstorm at the end of my rope and i have a friend who wrote a song and he's writing this song about this young lady who's having issues and he said she's barely hanging on to the end of her rope you know think about that so you know is she really hanging on to the end of a rope probably not my tank is empty I have a friend who's my age, you know, and he always kind of says, oh man, he says, my tank is empty. <laughs> you know, I'm out of gas. Uh, level the playing field. There's another one. Uh, these kind of things, I need to move on because there's, you know, cross that bridge when you come to it. That's all water under the bridge. A new way to fly, I already said that one. My cup is half empty, my cup is half full. Here's a Garth Brooks, the thunder rolls and the lightning strikes. And here's one. Some of you will know who I'm talking about when I say this one. It's the last one. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Who said that? Muhammad Ali. Yeah. But these, again, these are metaphors. And uh, I call these visual metaphors. It is what it is, but it becomes something more. Now, when I was in college, I was a painting student, an art student. I wasn't a photography student. And this is one of the paintings that I created. And uh, so anyway, I created that painting back in the, I don't know, probably in the late 60s. And I was in class teaching my students. And I just, it was just one of those random things. I had this green uh, painting standing there on the easel over the chalkboard and that picture was sitting beside it and I couldn't believe it. I mean, it just took me away. These pictures were made years and years apart, but whoops, wrong button, doggone it. How do I go backwards? There it is. 
Uh, but anyway, these shapes and forms are all very, very related to each other. And where did that come from? It's the way I think, the way I see, I don't know, you know, if there's any way to actually define how those kinds of things happen. You're gonna see this image pop up several times in my presentation. Uh, now here, another related idea, I think it speaks for itself, is that it's all about, you know, different mode of transportation, but it's, it's similar. Uh, another one of my friends has a hot, hot Mustang. It's got like 365 horsepower engine. And I was talking to him about it and we were talking about gas mileage. And I told him, I said, well, I said, you know, my car, whatever, we we're talking about gas mileage. I get about 23 or 24 miles. And he says, well, he says, you don't have 365 horses to feed. He says, I don't get that kind of gas mileage. Well, here's a similar type of thing. So uh, more visual. Mileage. This one is within the image itself, but there are related ideas to it. Uh, and I, this is, you can believe this or not, you know, I think God's on my side when it comes to taking pictures because I'm looking through the viewfinder, getting ready to take the picture. And this little lady walks up and sits down. I'm looking through my camera and I can't believe it. She comes down, comes in, sits down and she's holding her cane and he's holding his cane and click. I mean, she's looking right at me. I don't know, you know, and how did that happen? One shot, you know, and uh, a little, uh, a, a father and a little boy came running up and the little boy ran up and sat down on, whoops, I, I always push the wrong button. Ask my wife, and she says, yeah. But anyway, he came up and sat down on this guy's lap and uh, the dad started taking pictures of her and she got up and walked away. Yeah. It's just like that, you know, it's just, but here again, I just could not believe what was happening. I was just like, wow. Now, here again, related ideas within the framework of the picture and the actual photograph is sitting back there on the shelf. But a friend of mine said, hey, Dale, he said, you need to drive down Douglas. And I said, what for? And he said, I won't tell you. You just drive down Douglas. He said, you'll know. So anyway, I'm driving down Douglas. And of course, this place, it was called Allegro. Is that correct? A legacy. A legacy. Uh, antique store. And it was on the corner. Well, I had a red light and I'm sitting there and I look over and there's Marilyn looking back at me. So, okay, I know what he's talking about. So uh, it was taken real late at night and uh, I had actually taken one other picture of it before. And uh, anyway, the reason why it had to be taken at night is because the windows had reflection in it. And as cars would drive by, oh, damn. As cars would drive by, you had streaks all across here. So uh, Kathy like, well, what are you doing? You know, here it is 12 o'clock midnight and I'm packing up my cameras to go down. I said, oh, I got to take a picture. And uh, so anyway, the first picture I took of this did not have the bobcat in it. And then I, you know, I'm driving up and down Douglas, I see it and whoops, there's a bobcat. So uh, anyway, the thing that's kind of significant is the shape of the leg of the bobcat, the shape of Marilyn's leg are the same. Look at the bobcat's mouth, look at her mouth. And uh, then I actually, I don't usually title pictures, but this one was just automatic. A leg, Woo. it's all in one <laughs> picture, you know? So uh, anyway, related, related ideas. <laughs> anyway, uh, that was kind of fun to, to have that turn out the way it did. So, uh, and here again, you can interpret this any way you want to, it's just a, huge tree like a span of 94 feet or something like that but uh anyway i i actually even made a book called in praise of trees and uh i just have a real thing for photographing nature and photographing trees and stuff so anyway as it turns out this is divided right through the middle of the picture and uh Composition is a big deal in visual arts, the way the image is composed. And it just so happens, you know, and I didn't create the tree, I didn't do that, but it just so happened that it did that and it's all kind of spread out. Well, 
Here's a similar type of thing, except it's the root. This is, these are the branches, this is the root. And to me, it's a kind of a similar kind of thing uh, that has this kind of a visual relationship between the two. Uh, and uh, this one's kind of a unique. Uh, a lot of times Kathy can't sleep at night. So she gets up and she goes out and sits on the couch and reads in the middle of the night. Anybody do that? Anyway, it was kind of chilly and she got her blankie out and she's all curled up in her blanket and she got up and she just tossed it. Uh, this is our couch and the blanket was there. And I get up in the morning, have to go to work. I'm getting ready and I look over at that blanket and I said, I actually made a little sign that said right here, do not touch because <laughs> I couldn't photograph it. You know, I had to go to work. So anyway, and I have all these people in my house, you know, like my wife, Kathy, I think Andy, our son was still living with us at the time. But anyway, uh, this picture here was taken out at Botanica and uh, it's a, uh, oh, I can't say it right now, uh, Raggedy Andy, Raggedy Ann copper leaf. And uh, it was a very small plant. It wasn't much bigger than that. And there's all kinds of bushes and stuff up above it, but I spotted it. And probably the main attraction to me was the white border, which is kind of interesting. But the curvilinear lines, all of this kind of stuff is going on here. And if you look real close, those are raindrops. I had my tripod with me. I had my camera on it. I'm getting ready to photograph and downpour. It just poured. But I did get the shot. And by the time I got back to the the uh, building, I was soaking wet. But that's beside the point. I got the picture and I look at them and that was kind of one of the first, not all of them, but one of the first realizations that there's something going on here. It's kind of the way I see. I love curvilinear lines. I love for the mem shows, which means the same thing. And so anyway, that was, uh, I don't know, it's just like here again, related ideas. Sam. Oh, sorry, I, I um, there was a problem with the, one second. <laughs> there was a problem with the screen share. Yeah. Um, those of you on Zoom, hopefully the screen share is working now properly. All right. Um, all right, let me give, yeah. give, give this back to Dale so we can continue. Um, yeah, okay. Um, can you, it should, can you uh, advance it now? There we go. Okay. All right, there's that same picture again. And this was taken out in Rocky Mountain National Park. And it's one of those stop the car moments. And we were riding down the road, coming back from Bear Lake. Uh, and we were crossing the, uh, the bridge there. And it was in March, spring break. And we were crossing the bridge. And uh, I looked out the window and I said, stop the car. So anyway, I got out because it was just here again, me and the curvilinear lines and all of this. And I got lots of stories. <laughs> My students, the high school students, were starting to show up with these really beautiful, very, very expensive sneakers. And this one kid had this brand new sneaker and I spotted it and I said, you know, Johnny, can I photograph your sneaker? And he said, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, so I said, okay. And here again, I wasn't thinking of this other picture any more than nothing. And I photographed the side of his shoe and I start looking at it and I, wait a minute, look at that. Look at that, look at this, look at this, look at this. Even these things are related to each. I mean, it just kind of like bamboozles me that there's such a relationship between these things and it's, and I don't know how to explain it, but it's just, I guess, just the way I see things. So uh, here's another one of these kinds of things. I had taken this picture here many, many years ago, and this was on a, uh, a trip to New Orleans. And uh, I was attracted to this kind of hook kind of thing. And I didn't think much about it, but anyway, I photographed them. And then later on, I got to looking at it and I said, eh, they're the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So here again, it must be just the way I see things. This one was astounding and I saw this happen. Now, this little gal here, uh, the way I ended up getting that picture was we were in front of uh, the cathedral there in Jackson Square. Well, I don't remember the name of it. But anyway, it's the big cathedral there in New Orleans. And they had all these beautiful white cars lined up, Jaguars and Rolls Royces and stuff, all lined up in front of the uh, in front of the church. And I thought, well, oh, you know, there's a wedding going on. So maybe I can hang around and see the bride and groom come out the door, which I've got quite a few pictures like that. Well, anyway, I'm standing there and these it was kind of like a window, a door, and it opens up and she walks out. And here again, there's a railing, a gate, of a fence in front of her. And uh, she walks out and she just kind of stands there and she's talking to her dad and, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And I'm falling in love with the dress. Uh, and uh, so anyway, she's just standing there. So I put the camera up to my eyes. She kind of looks over at me and they keep talking and some other people came by with their video cameras and stuff and we're taking pictures of her. And then she steps back in to close the door and that's it. The next day I'm walking around. Kathy's in the conventions for four days and I walk the streets for four days. And I'm walking the streets and I walk past a window and I, I can't believe it. And I knew this one, you know, there she is, the very same kind of image. And uh, I was very aware of that, uh, that they were the same, same related ideas. So, okay, now we're getting a little bit stretched out a little bit, but here again, it's kind of the way I see things. And uh, you have to realize this is just an image on a piece of paper. They're not real. And the tree, is just, whoop, dang it. Ah, where am I going, Sam? Back arrow on the left. Ah, we're going forward, we're going back. You're seeing my okay. whole show, there we are. All right, anyway, uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, be able to photograph the Metropolitan Ballet Company uh, a little over a year. Uh, just to go in and photograph. And I was allowed to uh, go in and photograph all of the rehearsals. I got to meet some of the top ballet dancers from New York City and I could go backstage and I got, you know, just free reign. The lady who was the director uh, said, you know, that's art too. She says, we're art, you're art. She says, the only thing is you're restricted to two things. You can't use a flash, which is all right, because I don't use a flash. And the other thing is you can't go into the dressing rooms. That was it. And uh, so anyway, I would go down on the weekends and uh, photograph the rehearsals of the ballet company. And I actually photographed the perform the dress rehearsals. They wouldn't let me photograph the, the, uh, the actual performances, but I got to photograph the dress rehearsals. So uh, anyway, here's this young lady. Oh, dang it, Sam, it's your fault. <laughs> I'm going backwards. Why is it going forward? There we go. But anyway, uh, for some reason or another, and again, I like trees and I was into trees. And um, this is a cemetery real close to where we live. And I was driving down through the cemetery because we had that snowstorm and it was real windy. And I had seen other trees that had that white snow against the, the side of the tree. So I'm just driving through the tree or through the cemetery and I spot that and I just get out of my car and I go over and I photograph it. And then this, uh, this picture was taken in 1985. And this picture was taken many, many years after that. And somehow or another, they pop up. You know, it's the same picture. It's the very same thing. Subject matters differ, same composition. And uh, here's another one taken down in New Orleans. And uh, the a &P was just one of the grocery stores or whatever. And that was on the door. And uh, I thought, you know, 
that's kind of cool because it's white on white on white, which I'm a big fan of white on white on white. And then I'm walking around and uh, I see this, the graffiti and stuff. And I, you know, what's the difference? This is illegal, this is legal, but it's the same kind of concept. The very same kind of concept, just a different approach. And uh, the doors, everything. And here's another one. And uh, this picture, again, I'm just walking the streets of New Orleans and this truck pulls up. And I mean, it's somebody spent some time putting all that graffiti on the truck. And the guy gets out of the truck and I said, hey, can I take the back of your, take a picture of the back of your truck? And he said, yeah, no big deal. Go ahead and do it. So I photographed it. I stepped up on the curb and I looked up and here's this. I mean, they were side by side. He was actually unloading uh, food and stuff for the uh, restaurant for this hotel. And I'm thinking, they're similar, you know, related ideas. I didn't think of that at the time. This related ideas thing is fairly new. Uh, but anyway, there it is. And they're, they're the same, but they're different. And here again, how many of you are familiar with this? How many of you are familiar with that? Tell me about it. What is it? Teeter Rock. Teeter Rock. In Peterville. <laughs> Less than an hour from Wichita. <laughs> and my friend, who is a photographer friend, he somehow or another knew all about Teeter Rock. And so we went up to photograph Teeter Rock. And uh, here again, these pictures were, I didn't go photograph Teeter Rock and then go for photograph Exploration Place. It just somehow or another just works out that way, that they're the same, but they're different. And like I said, they're just images. They're not the real thing, they're just images. So they fall together side by side. Here again, that same kind of thing. There's my ballet dancers uh, during rehearsal. And this tree, it's no longer with us anymore, but uh, I had uh, been at work and I needed to go out to the uh, Wichita Center for the Arts, which is over on uh, Webb Road and Central. And it had been an extremely foggy day that day uh, when I went to work in the morning out at Wichita State. And it was so foggy that you couldn't see hardly at all. And so when I'm coming back, I had to go out there to the Wichita Center for the Arts and it was still foggy at noon. And I'm driving down Webb Road and I look over and there's this incredible tree with, you know, all the textures of that bark and everything like that. And instead of going to the Wichita Center for the Arts, I went straight home. I got my camera. I came back. And just as I was photographing, the fog started to clear up. But it was still foggy enough that the background is not distracting. And then these two guys, a girl and dancers, uh, I was, you know, they're all dressed in black and I was able to get up real close to them and photograph them and same kind of thing, related ideas. It's just the way I see, I guess. All right, and here's the same kind of thing. And uh, this is backstage, they're rehearsing for a dance and she's, like that and I'm just wandering around taking pictures of the ballet dancers and this one is in Oak Park there in Wichita and I drove by there just the other day and that tree is all broken down and it's just pretty much done for but for some reason or another I was attracted to that arch uh, in the tree because the one is holding up the other and there's the arch and this and that and then lo and behold it's the same pose She's posed, the tree's posed. And this one, uh, here again, I was with my friend, Kathy who was at the convention out in San Diego and Bob and I were spending the days out photographing and we went to, a, I wanted to say Bill Bile Park, but that isn't right, it's Balboa, Balboa Park. Uh, he knew all about it. He had lived in San Diego when he was in the Navy. So he knew, you know, Balboa Park and so we went there and we were just walking around taking pictures and stuff and here was a wedding photographer photographing this young lady and I 
the the dress i just couldn't believe how beautiful that dress was i mean it just i mean there it is it was very beautiful and so anyway i walk up and i'm standing beside the photographer and she's okay if i photograph her you ask her is it okay if he photographs you she says sure not a problem so i'm standing right beside the, <laughs> the wedding photographer and we're taking pictures and uh I just, again, I was so taken with that dress. Well, then there's that resemblance of the uh, magnolia, you know, kind of flower, because the dress kind of reminded me of that. This is a bit of a stretch as far as related ideas are concerned, but uh, close enough. Here's our flames again, the flame, the plant, and the the motion going up, everything going up, going up, going up. And for me, I don't know if you guys agree with me or not, but I see the same kinds of shapes going on between these two pictures. And uh, I thought it fit fairly appropriate uh, for a related idea, not necessarily flames, but that upward movement of this kind of Ziggy zaggy, ziggy zaggy, upward movement. And, uh, and, oof, talk, talk, talk. Uh, getting back to the, uh, the sneakers. And this is kind of crazy, but my students had these really cool shoes, and I was photographing that one. And I looked at the bottom of the shoe, and it was perfect. You know, it was a brand new shoe, the first time you wore it. So I looked at the bottom of it, and there's all of this stuff going on and uh, I was the lunchroom supervisor. And so at lunchtime, I'm standing down there in the lunchroom and here are these kids coming in with their, their beautiful sneakers. And I just come over and I said, hey, Johnny, can I see the bottom of your shoe? And he said, no, it wasn't me, I didn't step in it. <laughs> and I said, well, wait a minute, you know, I said, I don't, it's, that's okay. I just want to see the design on the bottom of your shoe. And my room was directly above the cafeteria. So all they had to do is go up the steps take off their shoe. I had it set up with my coffee stand, all set up with the camera on it. So they come in and the secret behind no shadows is uh, I had a drinking glass about this tall. And I still have them. They're about this big around pure drinking glass. And it would, the shoe would fit down over the top of that. So it took the shoe up off of the background. So there's no shadows. It just kind of floats. But uh, I got really fascinated with all of these different kinds of shapes and forms or shapes and forms going on. And I probably have 75 or 80 of these uh, pictures of the sneakers, the soles. And uh, of course, now I'm not around the students and stuff and it's, you know, it's time to move on. And here's another one. And I have no reason to know why, but Kathy's fixing supper and she had a red onion. And instead of cutting it across this way, she sliced it up and down and the, the onion fell in half on the counter and I grabbed it and she said, what are you doing? I said, you can't have it. She said, I need it. So no, you can have half of it. So anyway, uh, here again, related idea. It's all within the framework here. It's all within the framework and it's designs like that. And I have quite a few of different kinds of, uh, but I don't have them in this presentation, but, uh, uh, different kinds of forms, shapes, lines like that in different kinds of things, like an old piece of plywood that, uh... and here we are again, my white on white. I'm just fascinated with white on white. Uh, I guess it's just a photographic kind of a thing, but uh, this one was taken first and we were in Venice, Italy, just walking around. And here again, there's a wedding going on. So I thought, well, if I hang around long enough, we'll get to see the bride and the groom because the gondolas were sitting there bobbing up and down in the water and stuff. And these two guys were the gondoliers and they were standing in a restaurant and just standing there talking and stuff. And uh, of course, I didn't speak Italian and they didn't speak English. Maybe they did, but they didn't let me know. But anyway, I'm standing there with my camera around my neck and I walk up to them and I, you know, do the the sign language kind of thing. Ah, oh, yeah, you know, you can see they were very relaxed about it. It's not uncommon for them to be photographed. So I uh, took pictures of them and he was talking. You can see 
this one guy's got his mouth open he was talking to me and they're just kind of posing and they were just beautiful in their white satin and white shoes and all that it's just white on white on white this picture was taken in st petersburg russia and uh we were walking down an alley from one place to another and we were again as a church work team and we were together as a group and we were walking between the cars and I was kind of lagging behind, which is normal. I was always kind of the last one in line. But anyway, there's these two guys standing there and they were taking their smoke break. And uh, I just stopped and I looked at them and it's the same kind of thing. You know, I didn't know one word in Russia. I've learned one, I think, Peugeot, how do you say it, Kat? Yeah, anyway, that's the only word I ever learned in Russian. <laughs> and so anyway, I didn't say anything. I just motioned, you know, and, and uh, it's always, you know, in Russia, everything's thumbs up. I, I think uh, whatever, that's the national symbol. But anyway, I, I, you know, I do this and this and put my camera up and go thumbs up and they, yeah, you know, no big deal. So anyway, there was another pose where he had his hand hanging down here like that with the cigarette in his hand, but he exhaled at exactly the same time that I took the shot. So when I developed the film, his whole face was just nothing but buzz and it didn't work. So, okay, it isn't, you know, but this turned out okay, it's all right. But anyway, here again, white on white on white on white. And uh, so I saw that relationship. And again, the dualness of it, the two tutus, and uh, that's kind of significant in art too. You see a lot of uh, images where you have a double, double image, um, Margaret Berkey White photographed uh, some coal miners and the two of them were standing together. Well, I had to write a critique of that photograph. What do you say, you know? So anyway, I wrote that critique of that photograph and I remembered it. You know, the two people standing together are more powerful than one standing. So uh, that stuck out. And then here's my, kind of my little angels again. I always have these little angels, but uh, here we are back in New Orleans and uh, I had taken the picture of this angel first. And these are street performers. And they pose like mannequins. And here she is, she has her hands out like this and she just stands there, never moves a muscle. You can't, I mean, it's just like a mannequin. So anyway, I walk up and I put my camera up and start photographing her, and no big deal. And so anyway, she has her little urn there and I noticed it had some money in it. So I thought, oh, you know, I'll, you know, she was nice enough to let me photograph her. I'll give her a dollar. So I walk up and I drop a dollar in the urn and she's standing there like that. And she goes, <laughs> like that. I said, hey, that's kind of neat. So guess what? She made about five bucks <laughs> because I would walk around her and every time I put a dollar in, she'd put her hands together and buy. <laughs> that was really cool. And uh, so here, another, I, it wasn't the same trip. It was a different trip. But uh, I'm walking down the street and I see this whole group. They must have been on a field trip or something. They were high school kids and uh, they were coming out of this place and they were walking down the street and they had their little phones. That was back in the days before the, the cell phone was popular, but they were photographing each other, you know. One would stand and she'd take a picture and then the other one would stand. So I went up and I said, I could photograph the two of you together if you'd like. Said, oh, okay, you know, kind of thing. Well, I'm standing there and I got this great big huge black camera hanging around my neck and uh, everything was great. And I asked him, I said, can I take your pictures with my camera? And they said, oh, who's this guy? We're in New Orleans, you know? Mm -hmm. And so anyway, I convinced him, I said, you know, I'm a school teacher and you know, I." you work with kids and I, you know, this and that, and you're just, you're kind of cool with your, both of you dressed in white and this and that. And so they were standing on the corner next to a light pole and I photographed them. And then I looked over and I saw the dark background of this door. And I asked them, I said, you know, it'd be okay if you walk across the street, you're in the shade, there's not a lot of harsh, see how their faces, there's no shadows or anything. See, this one has shadows but there were no shadows, it was just really nice. And uh, so I photographed them and they're, you know, you can see they're pretty comfortable and relaxed. 
So then I said, you know, if you give me your names and addresses, I'll send you prints. I said, they're black and white film. And they just like, whoa, <laughs> no way. <laughs> Am I giving you my address and phone number? And so I said, no, no. I said, I'm serious. I said, I am, all I want to do is just send you some prints. It's no big deal. And so they finally decided, oh, he's probably all right. So they wrote down the address, grandma's address. <laughs> it wasn't their address. It was grandma's address. And they were pretty smart about that. But anyway, I did make prints and send it to them. I never heard another word, but I did send them prints. And then, uh, you know, here again, they're just white on white on white, white on white. And they're angels. I saw them as angels. Uh, and uh, here's just basic related shapes and forms. This picture was uh, down on the South Island of New Zealand. And they're called the Mauriki boulders. And they're very unique. There's only one other place in the whole wide world that there are round rocks like that. And guess where they're at? Just north of Salina. <laughs> there, the rocks in Salina are much, much bigger. These boulders here, because they've been pretty well picked over over the years, it was just an open beach and the boulders are all different sizes. And uh, over the years, people would pick up anything that was small enough for them to carry, they carried them off. Well, now, of course, it's protected where they can't do that. But the boulders are so big, they can't pick them up anyway. But uh, anyway, uh, they were just unique. I hadn't seen anything like it. And they, you know, the whole shoreline was just lined with these round rocks all over the place. And as I'm setting up my camera, I noticed this cloud, and it was way over here. And the cloud was moving, so I just got all my stuff set up, and I just stood there and waited. And the cloud was just right, and I photographed it, and you know this and that, and it's uh, kind of fun uh, for me as a photographer. Cloudy skies are much, much more interesting than clear sky, and partly because of the light, and a lot of it has to do with the the clouds are much more interesting. Well, this picture was taken in at the St. Louis. I think it's the Botanical Gardens. But anyway, it was in St. Louis. And they were having a uh, display of uh, Dale Chihuly. Are you familiar with Dale Chihuly, the, the glass artist and stuff? And these were balls that were floating in the pond. And I look at it and I thought, that is really cool because you can't really tell. And you know, this is the clouds. And there was no movement in the water. So it's just you know, these reflection was just perfect. And then you got the half moon here and you got this and everything, you know, and I thought, oh, that's really cool. And then I realized the design on this ball is very similar to the design on the uh, Moriki boulders. And so I thought, well, you know, they do kind of relate to each other, but this one here has generated some talk because if people don't know what it is, they can't figure it out because they think that's the sky. Like, what is this, you know? And then after a while, you know, if you turn the picture upside down, well, that doesn't work. What is this? <laughs> and uh, so anyway, it generates some nice conversation if you don't tell people what it's all about. And uh, so that's what I did. And this picture, these two pictures are back there. This picture was taken uh, on a hike up into, uh, I believe it was Rocky Mountain National Park, wasn't it? Dream Lake or some one of those lakes. That wasn't Dream Lake, but maybe. But anyway, we're walking and I'm carrying this great big old four by five camera and uh, it's heavy and I hadn't taken any pictures. Well, we got up to the lake and we were kind of walking around the lake and the storm starts moving in. Look at those clouds, you know, and I thought, wow, you know, that's really cool. And here again, composition is, you know, is what makes it work. Uh, this is what they would call a formal composition or uh, help me out, Madeline, what do we call it when it's right in the middle? The two images are, I mean, it's the center line anyway, the center line. And so I saw that as kind of a triangle. And so anyway, I set it up and photographed it and I really liked the way the clouds were, they were moving real fast. And as you can see, lots of snow and everything. Well, here we are back in Russia, and uh, 
if you look down here, there's a bunch of guys and they're putting down these, uh, yeah, what do we call those rocks? The, the what? Paving, paving rocks. But anyway, they were working very, very hard because the Pope was going to come visit. Uh, and this is just outside of, uh, anyway, my dad would help me. Pushkin. Pushkin, yeah, where the, whatever the guy was. But here again, I have this kind of thing for formal balance. That's the word I was looking for. The formal balance, because the building is built in formal balance. And if you stand off to the side, you don't get that same effect. So I just maneuvered around and got the, the thing centered up where it's just perfect, as close as I could to get the perfect. But anyway, I photographed it. And here again, later on, I don't know how long it was, but I saw the same composition as that. And they both significant or signify a certain degree of balance or power or whatever, because uh, triangles are in art a type of strength. If you turn that triangle upside down, then it's kind of wobbly. And uh, so, and there's a whole lot of those things that has to do with line. Vertical lines signify, you know, John Wayne. But do you guys remember John Wayne? Anyway, he always stood tall, stood tall. And back in the day, we were told, things have probably changed by now, but uh, the president of the United States was never photographed looking down on it. They always took the pictures looking up at it because there's that uh, significant feeling of power. Instead of looking down at them, they're, you're looking up at them. And so anyway, that's kind of what this all amounts to is that triangle that creates that feeling of balance or strength or you know sturdiness. And so all right. Whew. Uh, I did a series, maybe it's all part of there's some of it back there, but uh, of buildings. And this is a geyser in Yellowstone, but you know, it has that kind of it's built up over the years where you've got that kind of uh, made from rock and everything. And then this, anybody know where this is? Coronado Heights. Coronado Heights, right. That's Coronado Heights. And here again with my whatever, my composition kind of thing, I positioned myself to try and get it as uh, symmetrical as possible and get down low, photographing it up, to get that. And then I saw the relationship of that being organic, the rock and everything is very similar to the natural kind of rock, similar shape in a way. Uh, so anyway, I related to that. Here we have the uh, church at the Rancho de Chamayo. And this particular image was photographed by a very, very uh, famous American photographer named Paul Strand. And he photographed this back in the 20s. And uh, I was familiar with the picture because it was considered one of the most beautiful architectural photographs ever taken. And so I was familiar with it. But this is the back side of the building. This is the back side of the church. And I never could quite figure out what it was all about. Well, when we get there, I see this thing. And here again, you'll notice, and I just like, wow, no shadows to speak of. And uh, it was just so beautiful. And we spent, what, 45 minutes to an hour walking around that crazy thing and me taking pictures of it. And uh, I felt very good about this because it's, I've put my picture up against Paul Strand's picture. And I like mine better. <laughs> Just because it's mine, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, uh, it's softer. His has strong shadows on it. And he does have, and that's kind of what I, when I read about him, he also photographed very, very cloudy, overcast skies. And this one happened to be clear. 
but it was overcast and that's why there are no shadows. And this of course is uh, our Wichita exploration place and it's made out of formed concrete. This is made out of adobe, but concrete, adobe, very similar uh, in some ways, uh, building materials. And I just kind of felt like they, they were connected in a way, uh, related, uh, if you want to call it that. And this one was a major, major shocker to me. This one just flat, I couldn't believe it happened type of thing. But here again, you know me, I like to balance things up. I get this thing straightened out because I had learned a long time ago about the human face being symmetrical right down the middle. Everything's the same on one side as it is on the other. The same way with automobiles. Automobiles are the same on both sides. And so this is at Yellowstone National Park. And these had just been uh, reconditioned, restored, and they're the old 1930s buses. And it was just beautiful. So I lined myself up and uh, got it symmetrical as much as I could and just took a picture of it and didn't think much more about it. This picture here, which is, I don't know, probably in some ways one of my favorite photographs. I photographed it actually three different times. And my old photography buddy, Bob and I, we would go out on trips all over the state of Kansas and photograph it. And here again, white on white on white on white. And that was my thing. And if you'll notice the sky, it's overcast that day. The other times that I photographed it, I didn't have it uh, quite symmetrical and I didn't get back far enough so that this part here was kind of cut off. You couldn't see it and all of that. And anyway, photographed it, made a print of it. And then I got to looking at it and I thought, I can't believe it. Here we got this, here we got this, here we've got this, here we got this, we got the headlights, we got this and that. Mm -hmm. And uh, here again, it's just image on a piece of paper. It's just there. And I thought, hey, it worked. So anyway, like I said, it's one of my, this one here, because I worked at it so hard and the light was so perfect. You'll notice that there are no strong shadows. And uh, it just, you know, I just love it. It's just one of my favorite pictures because it visually it's just nice. You know, that's about all it is. It's just nice to look at. And here we go. Uh, this one is again, and I don't know where I got the idea for it, but I photographed the apple. And part of it was, is that when it was cut in half, you had that black outline around it, like it was kind of a drawing. And of course the apple meat itself was very white. And so somehow or another, I saw that just as a very symmetrical, kind of a cool shape. And uh, I went out and I bought, I don't know how many apples, but I took them and I'd slice them in half and look at them and they didn't work. I knew what I wanted. I wanted something exactly symmetrical as far as I could get it. A lot, you know, they're not symmetrical. Most apples are just kind of <laughs> lopsided and this and that. But anyway, I finally got one that was just perfectly symmetrical. Okay. And uh, you can read into it other kinds of things because it's organic forms. Organic forms resemble organic forms, whether it's, you know, human or plant form. So anyway, that's very, very subliminal. And some people have kind of jumped me about it, but, and then there's the pear, which is similar and uh, just similar shapes. But look at this, whoa, we got a strawberry. And uh, this was at City Art. They had a show for Valentine's Day and they wanted people to show pictures of you know, and it could be drawings, paintings, it could be anything that related to uh, Valentine's Day and love and stuff. And I submitted this and it was, you know, very well accepted. Let's just put it that way. And here, and I couldn't figure out how to get this made into black and white. So I do photograph in color, but this is out on another one of our trips with a bunch of people uh, in Kansas and it's over uh, the rocks. Um, not monument rocks, but anyway, there was some mushroom rock or something. But anyway, there were these rocks that we were all gathered around there. Well, it's kind of a place where everybody goes, you know, 
and people carved their names into the rocks and they carved their names. And here's this one carved into the tree. And I just happened to have it. And I thought, oh, look at that. Related ideas. So anyway, one time we got to talking about, you know, students would say, what do you photograph? What do you photograph? I think you can photograph anything you want. Said, what do you mean? Said, it's not interesting, you know, whatever. I said, I have photographed rubber bands. And they didn't believe me. <laughs> you know, what are you talking about? You photographed rubber bands. And here again, when I was a young kid, my grandmother had a story about peeling the orange. You know what I'm talking about? You could take the orange and if you could peel it without the peeling breaking, you would have a long life or you'd have a nice marriage or what? I don't know. But anyway, she had a story about that. And uh, so anyway, I show my grandkids how to peel an orange <laughs> and they like to put it back together again where it's hollow. And uh, so anyway, I saw that relationship between the kinds of things. And I had a whole series of about five different rubber bands and uh, a lady saw it and she said, I got to have that whole set. So somewhere in this world, this lady's got five different shapes of rubber bands. <laughs> Anything can be photographed. All right, here's that road of life, you know, and you can take that road of life and you can go. This is actually at the very center of the United States, that little place out there in Western Kansas, and it just goes on forever. And I thought, well, I'm here in the middle of the United States. I'm gonna take that picture because there was no traffic. It wasn't long until there was traffic, but there's no traffic. And I just set it up and photographed it at a crossroad. And here again, my fascination with trees, fascination with white, whatever. And this is at, uh, uh, it's not important where it is, but it was a lake at um, Council Grove, Council Grove Lake. And Bob and I, again, we were out on our trips photographing and you're always looking for something to take a picture of. Well, that shadow was pretty cool. And here again, it all has to do with the composition, getting things symmetrical, balanced and everything. And I looked at them and here's the road of life that spreads out and goes all over. And here's the road of life that's a little bit more narrow. You know, whatever, I don't know. I don't like to read too much into them, but it's there, you can read into it. All right, we're getting close to the end here. This is the great story. This is my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> but anyway, I was sitting in the living room and you could see through the dining room into the kitchen. And Kathy's in there with her, you know, getting ready to make pancakes or something. And there's a bowl that sits in there and she had that bowl in there. And uh, I'm sitting there watching her do it. And she rocks this thing back. And I say, Kyle Silver away. You know, I saw it as, you know, the Lone Ranger or all of those uh, cowboy shows that we watched when we were kids, at the end, they would ride up on a hill and they'd pull back on their horse. The horse would jump back like this and they would rock their feet and then you'd put down and ride off into the sunset. And I saw that, you know, when she rocked that back, that was the very same movement as the Lone Ranger. So, okay. So I grabbed it and I took it and here again, white on white on white, all over the place, white. And uh, the uh, room that I taught in at Northeast Magnet, the whole wall, the north wall was nothing but windows. And that's called artist light. North light is the artist light. And so I took it in there and set it up and got the shadows, everything the way I wanted it and photographed it. And I made prints of it and I showed it to people and they thought it was absolutely nuts. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be kidding. Well, and finally I said, well, if you see a horse, okay, it's a horse. We don't care. It's not a horse. It's an egg beater. So anyway, a couple of years later, and I'm talking a couple of years, Kathy and I and one of her friends, we were going to go out and spend the Saturday together. This girl was from out of town and we were sitting down at the old mill pastry shop and it opens up pouring down rain, just torrential rain. And Kathy and Kathy are looking at each other and say, well, now what are we going to do? Oh, let's go to the antique store up the street. Oh, great. That's the last thing I want to do is go poke around in an antique store. 
And uh, so anyway, we went to the antique store and we're walking around and walking around and oh, pile of silver away. <laughs> there he is. And so anyway, <laughs> I grabbed that thing and it's, you know, I was going to bring it tonight, but I didn't. But anyway, there he is. And I grabbed that thing and I said, I don't care what it costs. I don't care anything about it. I am going to keep that thing. And then the next issue, whoops, dang it. Um, here. Oh. Oh, let me uh yeah get me I'll back get it. me let back me we gotta yeah we gotta talk about this well um, let's go back to here yeah down there to the bottom go. all right so there they are side by side and uh let me get the share sheet screen sharing going again this is what happened last time with the screen sharing so all right for a good price what's that did you get there it for a good price sixteen dollars yeah. I didn't yeah. care. I didn't care if it was 116. Okay. I think we're good now. Yeah. Anyway, so anyway, I put them together side by side to show people that I wasn't completely nuts. I knew what I was doing. And I titled it, and I usually don't title work, but this one had to be titled. It's called Mixer. And uh, so anyway, that concludes my presentation. And uh, I think that's it. That's it. All right. So anyway, related ideas, and I didn't follow my notes at all. You know, I have notes, but they're not there anymore. I don't use them. And uh, conclusion, which I was going to use as an opening, but this is in my book. I, I wrote this uh, introduction, and uh, it's just very short. To see connections between related ideas increases my sense of awareness for both singular subjects of my visual encounters and for the universal patterns that shape all experiences. My need to express myself visually comes from the desire to show a resemblance to these fundamental relationships. So that's that. Any questions? <laughs> Anybody have any questions? That this, uh... Yeah, and those of you on, on Zoom, if you type a question, I'll, I'll, I'll read it to Dale. So. I guess um, I was kind of wondering. Um, you know, you, you mentioned about not, of course, when you're when you're shooting on film, you don't have the the, the view screen to like you take a photo and you see what you've got to take a photo, which is how a lot of us do it now. Does that do you think that affects how how you uh, your process? The the fact that you don't have that immediate feedback loop while you're shooting. Well, I like to use this just like everybody else. They say, well, that's a very good question. <laughs> I hear that every time that, you know, you listen to people and they say, well, that's a very good question. Uh, to try and answer that, uh, I have been taking, you know, I've been involved in art since, you know, I was in college and started in 1963. Uh, and is very engaged in studying art basically drawing and painting and there's lots and lots of compositional classes and learning about composition and learning about this and learning about that but over the years you build up what i call a visual vocabulary and it it's kind of you build it up and it's there and you see it in one thing or another and i don't necessarily always see things as subject matter I see things as shapes and forms and relationships and all that type of thing. And of course, uh, you have to have subject. You have to have a subject. But uh, it's, you know, I'm, I'm just attracted to curvilinear shapes and forms. I mean, I can walk down the street and I see things that are curvilinear and stuff like that. And it just, bingo, there it is, where other forms, you know, and I have friends who see things angular. You know, Madeline, I'm going to put you on the spot. What do you see things when you're photographing? What is, what um, attracts you? Contrast and organic shapes. Contrast and organic shapes. Mm -hmm. And you probably are building up a vocabulary of that. Yeah. That's what you see. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, you know, anybody else have uh, related ideas of things when you're taking pictures? Uh, most of us just, you know, we see things and we're attracted to them and we take pictures of them. And that's, you know, what it is. 
I don't know, did I answer that question? I kind of forgot what it was while I was talking. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, but anyway, um, I do digital photography and, uh, but most of the time my digital imaging is more subject matter based. I do have some that I'm, you know, very proud of. I never in my life thought I would have meant to taking pictures with my cell phone, but uh, when we travel, a big old bulky camera, especially trying to get through the airports and all that kind of stuff, the cell phone, they don't, you know, and the cell phones nowadays are so sharp and so beautiful, you know, and I have a friend that we travel with and I was carrying my, you know, now it's a big old camera. Back in the days, it was a 35 millimeter size camera. And I'm walking around carrying this thing on heights and all this kind of stuff. And she's walking around with her cell phone and she's taking pictures. And I look at her pictures. Hers are so much better than mine. <laughs> she's got these really beautiful pictures and I'm so jealous. <laughs> and so anyway, the last trip that we went on, I took my cell phone and I didn't take my camera with me. And I'm very proud of those pictures. But here again, you're a tourist, you're out there, you're photographing waterfalls, you're photographing, you know, whatever. And it's not necessarily intentionally meant to be art, where when I'm photographing in black and white, it's intentional. And you pretty much know what you're going to do. Some of it, like the early pictures of the little boys and all that, that is just grab shot. That's just, you know, in Cartier-Bresson's, the decisive moment when everything just falls into place visually and you happen to get a really good picture. And uh, so that, that was a, a different kind of a intentional, you know, I mean, I was intentional about it. I was devoted to taking pictures. Back in those days, you could photograph people too. It was no big issue. Like I said, you know, the woman and child, I'm standing right beside the lady. She's talking and she never even reacted to me. No big deal. Nowadays, they're going to take you up in the mountains and put a bullet in your head if you photograph children. It's all because our times have changed and everybody's so afraid. What they told me about, you know, photographing children on the streets, is, especially in the third world countries, is they're so afraid of human trafficking. And here you are walking around like this with a nice great big camera. And I'm taking these pictures of these kids and I get home and I develop them and there's always there's always an adult watching me. I don't think I need to photograph kids anymore. I've done it. It's over. So anyway, now, and again, it's part of it's just lugging those cameras all over the place anymore. I just can't do it. So it's not a, not a thing I do anymore. I photograph plants out in my garage, which I did this afternoon. There was a, a plant that I've already photographed at once, but I decided, hey, maybe I can get another good picture of it. But uh, forms, they're beautiful. All right, if that's it, no more questions. Yes, sir. So, like you said, you just photographed plants in the garage. What did you have any special lighting that you oh, used? Yeah. I use natural light. Yeah, yeah. that is what comes in. The, yeah, in the room. and it's always in the shade. It's always in the shade. And I have uh, the artist cloth. You can write this one down. Black velvet. Is the artist plot. And I photograph because again, it's black and white photography. So it's either black, pure black, and the velvet does not reflect light. So you get a pure black, no reflection. And the other is pure white, and then the other is middle gray. And those are the three backgrounds that I use. And uh, natural light. On occasion, very, very seldom, but on occasion, I do have some auxiliary lighting and I do have a diffuser, it's a professional diffuser, a round white thing that light passes through. So if you're photographing on a bright sunny day and there's all kinds of shadows, you have someone around and they will hold the diffuser up between the sun and the subject and it softens the light and works. But shadows are not a good thing for a photographer. They're just a pain. But sometimes you have to do it because you don't have any other choice. Okay, I guess that's the conclusion. Did I talk too long? 
No? Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's give a round of applause.